Hey guys, so I'm working on updating my porch. I don't know if you guys have seen the shorts, but if you haven't, you have to check them out. So our first project for decorating the porch, like we've done a lot of the work, we painted, we stenciled the floor, now we're getting to the fun stuff. Um, I have windows, you guys know I love collecting old junk. So I have this window and we have already um, added the tin and this one is gonna hang up in here for me to sit plants on this ledge. So we can use this window to make a little shelf. And I have a second window with a red ant on it. Okay, he walked off, sorry. And so this is the window we're gonna be working on today though, you guys. So this window is gonna go right here on this small wall. And so we put the shelf on the bottom. And so I'm gonna have tons of plants in this space. So I'm making all these ledges where we can sit plants all over the place. But for this window, we're gonna actually decoupage these panels. Hi, my name is Royce Hunt Bell, owner and operator of Recycle Treasures. Let's get started. So you guys, we have our window all set up and ready to go. Just a few things. I did take some of my alcohol wipes. So what I do, you guys, I buy these, they're Bactive disinfectant wipes and I just take regular rubbing alcohol and I just kind of squirt it in there and these wipes are super handy to have in my shop because they make really fast work of cleaning up any paint spills or um, ink splashes or anything that I get anywhere and I love using the alcohol because it dries really quickly so I'm going to use one of these wipes and just clean up the back of my window really well because we're actually going to be doing reverse decoupage today. So I'm just cleaning those. I cleaned all my other panels, but I kind of wanted to come on with you guys to kind of see like how I did it. So, and of course you could have used like window cleaner or something like that, but I don't know how many of us have Windex actually in our shops. And then just really quick dry so that I don't have any um, like smudges or anything because I'm going to be decoupaging this side of the glass. So anything that's on this side is going to show on the other side. And once I decoupage, like, it's gone, right? I can't get it off, so. So the decoupage paper I'm going to use today, I'm using Recycles Decoupage Paper, and I'm going to be using Industrial Masterboard. So when I created this paper, you guys, I was really inspired by the masterboards that junk journalists create whenever they're gonna do like tags and they want things to look cohesive. Um, they'll make a whole master board and then they'll cut from it to make the different items. And so that was kind of my inspiration for this industrial master board was the idea that you could do several projects from this piece of paper and they won't look exactly alike, but they'll coordinate really, really well. And so I have two pieces laid out here because I think I'm gonna need more than just the one piece to cover each of these panels. We're gonna do a reverse decoupage today. So we'll be decoupaging the back side of the glass. And so we'll be taking our decoupage paper and laying it face down. I'm doing this because this is gonna go on my front porch and I'm really trying to put decorations in there that are gonna allow me to just spray everything down periodically because we live in Arizona and things get dusty really quickly. This particular paper goes in multiple orientations, um, which I did on purpose so that if you wanted to use the whole piece, you absolutely could, and you could either use it horizontally or vertically. Um, so I'm just looking to see how I'm gonna use it to maximize the paper in each of the panes. And so by putting it down and kind of using my finger to score, I can tell um, where I need to trim later. And I can also tell like this piece, I want to go here and I know I'm gonna be okay because I can see the score line from where I'm gonna trim that one. And I want it to make sure that I get my ferns in. Um, on these. Ah! 
Oh my gosh, that was a bit of a workout. So I could have almost covered this entire thing with one piece of paper, but I was super persnickety about what I wanted on my window. And so um, I sacrificed some things, but it's all good. And so I'm just gonna double check and make sure that my final like placement is gonna be balanced and make decisions about what I want where. I think I got most of my favorite things on here. And so now it's time to decoupage. Because this is going to be outdoors, I'm actually using Wise Owl's One Hour Enamel to decoupage this piece. I'm using a matte formula. I'll be honest with you. I probably should have used um, a more a glossier one because I'd be less likely to get any kind of haze on my glass. But this is what I had out. So this is what I'm using. So I'm going to get my anchor row down. That's like my first row. Um, and it's really going to set the tone for the rest of the sheet and how it lays out. Because I want to make sure, I really wanted my, my octopus coming off of the edge, so I'm working pretty tight on this one. I generally like to leave an overhang of about a quarter of an inch, um, just in case I tilt my paper or something that I get full coverage. But this one I'm working pretty close to the edge because I wanted my octopus to be coming in. And this is just a felt tipped spatula. It really, really helps to push out any of those wrinkles. And to push out any air bubbles that get trapped underneath my paper. And just like that, my paper is down. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to seal this before I move on to the next one because I'm actually going to glaze the back of my papers just to add a little bit of a grunge element. And so I want to make sure that my paper is sealed and dried before I go back in with my glaze. If you guys are enjoying this tutorial, be sure and subscribe to my channel. Uh, we upload new videos once a week. And if you want to make sure that you don't miss out on any of the new videos that are uploaded, you can hit the bell and you'll actually get an alert of when we upload a new video. I'm going around my edge and just making sure that my paper is laying down really nicely on the surface, but I'm also being really careful not to get product on the wood part of the window because my paper is going to stick wherever I put product. And make sure my layout is the way I wanted it. I am really loving the green in this paper. I think it's going to pop really nicely with the colors that I have on my porch. And I thought about putting transfers on the front of my glass, but I don't know how the transfers would do over time on the porch, just because it's so hot in Arizona. I do find it much easier to work out my bubbles and my wrinkles when I um, kind of go over my paper as I lay it down, as opposed to just laying it down and then trying to work everything out. I do have um, several videos on basic decoupage techniques. If you guys have never decoupaged before and you're interested in those videos, you can find them here. And I am sealing the back as I go so that when I come back to add my glaze, I won't have to worry about the paper really sucking that glaze up right away and losing control over how dark it gets. So you guys, I have all my panels decoupaged now and they're mostly dry. I wanted to talk about something really quickly before we started trimming. Um, because we're working with glass and heat, it's really important that uh, you take your time warming your pieces. If you initiate or you introduce too much heat too fast, your glass can actually crack. Or if you put too much heat, your glass can crack. So when I'm drying my paper on my window, especially because these are like antique windows, so these are like single pane glass, I'm being really cautious about moving my um, heat gun across the surface um, of my piece. 
and I'm starting off pretty far away and then moving in closer as the glass warms up because once it becomes like uniformly warm, you're less likely to have it crack, but you still don't wanna have it get too hot. I hope that makes sense. Whenever I'm gonna trim like an inset like we're working on today, I like to pay um, special attention to my edges. Your product has a tendency to pull in those areas and that's actually where it's the most important that it's dry, right? Because if you have any moisture, when you go to trim your piece, you'll actually tear your paper and it won't look as clean. So just spend an extra um, few minutes going over your edges and just making sure that they're really dry before you start trimming. So I haven't trimmed yet, but I wanted to talk to you guys about our next steps. Um, I am really liking the soft kind of transparent nature of the decoupage as it sits right now. And so I, I don't think I'm going to paint the back. If you wanted it to be like really, really, um, bright your decoupage and you wanted to really pop off of your surface, then you would paint white on the back of your paper and it would stand out a lot more. And another option that I have is I could go in with some glaze around the edges um, and make like a really grungy halo on the back of my paper and then paint it white. Um, and I would have like this really like cool grungy look to my paper, but I had planned on doing those things. But now that I've decoupaged my paper, I'm really liking it looking just like this. But if you would like to see me d demonstrate um, that, I do have another video and you guys can find it here. It's a different project, but it is reverse decoupage. And I show you guys the differences between it when it's when it's painted, when it's not painted, when it's glazed versus when it's not glazed. So you guys can make like informed decisions about how you're gonna do uh, your reverse decoupage projects. So my next step is to trim, you guys. So I've gone through and I've dried each section really well. Um, a couple of things when you're trimming your pieces if you want your trim to be super clean a make sure that your edges are really dry 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 um, B make sure that you're working with a really sharp blade so that you're actually cutting your paper and you're not tearing your paper um, and C I probably should did one two three huh ABC one two three anyways I digress <laughs> Lastly, it's a lot easier. So you see how on this one, it's not tacked all the way over. It's gonna be harder for me to get a nice clean cut on this one. Um, if your edges are tacked down really well, it also makes it super easy to get a nice clean cut. Okay, you guys, so it's all trimmed. I just love it. I was gonna do more, but I'm thinking I'm gonna keep it simple. I am loving it the way that it is. And most of my porch is like really fresh looking. So I don't I don't think I wanna grunge it up. I think I'm gonna leave it like this. But I do want to um, do something with my little shelf I have here. You guys, this is legitimately, so this window is out of an old house, right? It's upcycled and this is a piece from an old tabletop. And we just cut it to size. Um, and screwed it to, I mean, and um, I think we glued it and nailed it to the bottom of this. I'm probably gonna put brackets on here just to make sure because I'm gonna be putting plants on here, but um, this piece of old wood, it needs some love. So we're gonna give it some love really quickly. Um, I have here some Wise Owl Furniture Salve. Um, this really conditions your wood beautifully. This one actually is a clear, it doesn't smell. I did that for myself because I'm in here with no ventilation. And then I also have a little black wax here I'm gonna add just to deepen it a little bit. Um, and you guys know I love a good halo. So I'm gonna go around the edges with my black wax and then finish it off with um, my salve. And so my poor brushes, I don't ever wash them. And so I'm gonna take my black wax and just kind of go around the edge of my piece. You guys know I love a good halo, right? I'm like all in for that. And then I'm gonna take my salve um, and my salve is gonna like blend that wax out so that it's more subtle. But it's also gonna um, just breathe life into this piece of wood. And the salve both um, conditions and it's a sealer as well. We're gonna seal the bottom but I'm not gonna waste any black wax on the bottom. Beautimus. 
and you can see that's beautiful tiger oak and somebody was gonna throw that away because it was you know it was broken but we were able to save this portion of it and reuse it so um, and now it's gonna be a ledge for my plants and that's it um, I'm actually gonna leave the window I love the chippy old paint that's on there um, I'm gonna leave it as is and she is ready for her place on the porch. Thank you guys so much for joining me for this project. I do have more porch projects coming up. I'm super excited about them. So I hope you guys will join me. I will um, post a picture. I'm probably gonna do a blog article on this particular project so you guys will get to see um, the pictures um, before, during, and after we get done. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're looking for the products that I use today, you can find them at RoyCycles.com. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure and subscribe. And you guys, there is nothing here that I've done today that you guys cannot do. You can do this and you can do it today. We'll see you next time.